greenhouse plastic can be installed many different ways and many of these different ways might work just fine. Uh, but we're going to walk you through a process that we follow that we find works really well for two people without machinery and that exposes the plastic to wind minimally, reducing the risk for it to blow away. Now, we like to install our end walls and top covers separate, and we think you can get a better, tighter pull if you do this. So this process that we're going to outline here, it assumes that you've already installed your corner wind panels, if you have those, and it also assumes you've installed your end walls if you uh, are doing those as separate pieces. So we're gonna walk you through the process from setup all the way through securing your plastic at each side. Here we go. Now to start your process of pulling your top cover, set up your roll on one end of your structure on two saw horses and a tube like you see here. This will allow you to set your plastic up so you can pull it over the top of your structure. Um, it's folded in a way where it's a gusset fold uh, so it meets in the middle. So this will allow you to pull your plastic with the middle of this plastic roll perfectly in the middle of your top structure. Um, so the peak will line up with the center of this roll and then it will unfold on either side of your structure. It allows you to pull square and it also allows you to pull so that less of the plastic is exposed to the wind while you're doing this process. After you have your roll of poly in place, you're now ready to get some rope attached to the end of it so that you can then pull it across the top of your structure. Now I've seen people elevate these rolls before they go through this process and I've seen people use tractors to elevate them and all kinds of stuff like that but for two people without any machinery uh, we find that this is probably one of the best processes for getting the poly ready to pull across the top. So there's a person on one side and a person on the other side of that plastic and you roll toward each other and you're just trying to create um, something at the end of that roll where you can tie rope around it. Here's a close-up of what we created with uh, rolling those ends toward each other. And now we have something firm that we can get uh, the, the rope over. So this is quarter inch rope. It's a polyester blend. And you know we're just going to wrap the rope around it and create a, a single knot. And the only reason, the reason we're doing a single knot, you know, then then uh, one one person puts a finger on that, just like you're wrapping a present, and we're folding this this end of the poly over, and this is to create uh, a nub at the end that the rope can tug on and it won't slide off. So, taking that that loop we made at the bottom, we're gonna make it as tight as we can, and we're gonna wrap it around the top now, and repeat this process. And we started at the bottom, we're looping around the top after we make this uh, nub end here. And we're just going to pull as tight as we can here. And uh, there we go. And we, one person puts their finger on that as well to hold it in place. And uh, then you're going to loop and you're going to end on the bottom just like this. So this is a still of what it will look like right before you're going to pull it over the top of your structure. And you're going to make sure that last knot you make is a double knot so it doesn't slide uh, apart. And you're going to make sure that last knot you make is on the bottom of that nub. So facing the inside of the tunnel. Once your knots have been completed, you're going to take the free rope and walk it all the way down to the end of your structure. And you're going to put it on top of your structure along the center purlin and run it all the way down. So the rope will be resting on the top of your structure all the way down and attached to your poly. I've also placed an additional ladder in the middle of the structure, which you'll see me using a few times. So this is when the real fun begins. Uh, the person closest to the poly will be on a ladder and you want to be able to take tension off of the plastic so that it doesn't drag along that end hoop and the person that's uh, feeding the plastic up is just trying to take some of that tension off so that the other person can use that rope and pull it across the top of the tunnel and you know at first I like to start on a ladder inside the structure you can see here from another angle uh, it allows you to pull from uh, a position closer to the poly that's on the end of the structure and take some of that tension off the length of the rope. And as you pull the plastic closer to you, you can move to another ladder. As you can see, I have another ladder placed inside of this structure because it's long. Or you can move to the very end. Here's a perspective from inside the structure on top of that first ladder. You can see the plastic is running along the center purlin and the folds running on either side of that plastic roll are evenly distributed on the left and the right side of that center purlin. 
You can see that I've moved to the end of the structure here, and we're going to repeat the process of the person on the far right side taking tension off the plastic, and while that's happening, uh, I on the left side am going to pull the poly toward me. And you can see that having the plastic at the top uh, kind of bunched up allows the plastic to be fully laid out on top of the structure with most of that plastic not being exposed to wind. And the plastic that is exposed to wind at the peak, all those folds creates additional weight on the plastic itself. So as winds come, if one person holds on the left and one person holds on the right, um, it, it can usually hold the plastic very well, even in moderate winds. Um, but you can see there's also a ladder in the middle of the structure. So in a perfect world, if you have a third person, they could be stationed on that third ladder in the middle and could hold you know, in a desperate situation. When the person pulling the plastic reaches a point at which it's been pulled past their end wall, you can undo the, the knots that you've tied and the person on the far side that was lifting the plastic up to take tension off it will find center and throw some spring wire over the top of that plastic and into the uh, channel that's going over top of that end hoop. And the person who is pulling the plastic will mimic this step. Securing each peak with wire will do a few things. It'll help square the plastic so when you drop it, it's perfectly square. Uh, but it will also hold the plastic in place while uh, one of the people gets down and, and starts unfolding the plastic on either side. So it, it's an insurance policy against wind, essentially. So you can see uh, at this point, we're going to drop the plastic on one of the sides, and we typically choose the side where uh, the wind is, is coming at it. So the side we're dropping here, uh, once we drop it, theoretically, the wind will just push it against the, uh, the house instead of opening it up and blowing the other the other half of the plastic down. So you can see we're just dropping one side at a time. One person remains on their ladder holding the plastic in place. Wires being thrown right below the hip rail as another insurance policy against the wind. And we're going to move from one end to the other, making our way down to the other end. And we're just going to uh, wave some of the, the folds out of it, being careful not to catch on any of the, the purlins uh, or any of the cross connectors that have been installed. You can see there's a little wind coming. It's a little billowed, but uh, really, you know, it's a pretty calm day. So we're being careful. We're dropping the remaining plastic. And as we get down, as we get down here on the, the right, we're going to do our best to continue keeping the structure's plastic square. So as you have all this loose plastic, one of the biggest things that happens, one of the biggest mistakes made with poly pulling is time's not taken to, to square everything up and because the plastic is loose, it's easy to think things are square when they're actually not. So we're going to use the lines that are in the plastic as folds to help us out. We're going to put a little wire beneath that hip, hip rail, or if you have you know, lumber, it's going to be a hip board. But uh, securing that, uh, that spring wire right in there. And um, you can see after I do that, I'm going to kind of jog to the other side of the, the structure. You know, it's getting a little breezy, so <laughs> I'm a little nervous. If you've installed plastic before, you know what that's like. But because this first wire was just roughed in, it's not quite square. So we're going to unwire and resecure pulling from end to end. It's going to help square it up. So I just put a little tension from the right to the left, and I'm reapplying that spring wire into the channel. And this will keep this side of the structure completely square. And um, once that's been completed, we're going to repeat that process on the other side. So we're dropping the, uh, the plastic, and we're going to just go right through that again. One person will still remain on a ladder at one end holding the bunched up plastic while it's being walked down on the other end. Once you have both sides of your greenhouse plastic down, you're now ready to more permanently secure it. You can see the wire that's been installed at each peak temporarily. There's a person at one end, a person at your end. You're going to each wire down towards the hip rail on opposite ends. As you're making your way down from the peak to the hip rail, you're going to wire with one hand and you're going to pull on the plastic with tension with the other hand, keeping that tension ahead of the hand that's wiring. Once each of the ends have been entirely installed with the wire going into the channel, we like to go to one of the sides of the structure and we pick the middle of the structure. You can see here nothing has been wired in and we like to start there and work our way out. So two people starting in the middle and working in opposite directions. While installing the spring wire as you work toward either of the ends, 
put downward pressure on the plastic while you're putting the wire in. We like to use our forearm when putting pressure on the plastic. We find that its flat surface won't put too much pressure as we try to make the plastic top cover tight, uh, which will prevent white streaks from getting in the plastic because all the pressure is spread over more distance instead of just using you know, the small group of our hand. Creating tension on the plastic is important because the more tension as you go will create a tighter top cover pull. Um, but you're also trying to balance this uh, against you know, keeping the plastic square as you move from end to end. So as you make your move from the middle to the ends, you might want to use uh, the lines that are in the pre-folded plastic as a guide uh, for keeping track of how square you are as you're putting tension on the plastic. And as we move through this process, you can see we like starting in the top run of the aluminum channel as shown here. We've only done half of one side and already the plastic's looking tight. And we repeat this process on each side of the structure and we end as seen here. You're going to snip the wire uh, right when you get to the end and you're going to do this on all four corners of your structure. So at this point you'll have wire secured over each of the end hoops from hip rail to hip rail and you'll have wire secured on the top run of your hip board channel from end to end on both sides and if you are having roll up sides that'll be the next step but if you're securing with wire and channel at the base of your structure you're pretty much done with tightly pulled plastic that's installed completely. So if you're looking to install greenhouse plastic and you don't have a lot of hands to help out in the process and you also will need a, a way to do it while reducing the exposure of the plastic to wind, this might be a method you want to consider following. That being said, if you have people offering their hands uh, to help on the day you're pulling plastic, I strongly recommend accepting. Um, having additional hands is very helpful. On top of that, the one other major thing that you never want to forget is the best day to pull greenhouse plastic is a calm day. If you have any questions about this process, please leave a comment. And if you're interested in watching additional videos like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.